Okay, I'm just gonna launch right in because I don't feel like filming an intro right now. Um, I'll film one later. <laughs> Okay, so let me set the scene for you a little bit. It is now April 20th, 8 p.m. And we're gonna time travel back to April 13th, um, the day of a book launch for an author named Lauren Hoff. Lauren Hoff has a Twitter account, as many of us do. I personally have one, you should follow me. Um, <laughs> so Lauren's just on her little Twitter account, really excited about her book launch, as any debut author would be. Um, I would certainly be really excited about my book launching, um, except Lauren decided to do something that any author in the world will tell you not to do. She went on Goodreads and looked at the reviews of her book. Now... Let me just show you the reviews in question. I'm gonna put it up here on the screen. Please notice that these are four star reviews that say it's a 4.5 rating. They rated her book a 4.5, which is really high. It's a really high rating. That is like everything a debut author wants is such a high rating. So what Lauren Hoff said on Twitter, she said, and I quote, glad to see most of the Goodreads assholes still giving four star reviews to show their super tough reviewers who need to like fall in love, you know? Anyway, no one likes you grow up. Huh? Excuse me, ma'am? You got a 4.5 on your debut book and you go on Twitter and just shit on these reviewers for giving you such a high rating. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that on the day that your book releases? It's just the sheer arrogance is what gets to me, I think, because to have the audacity to shit on these people who gave your book a 4.5 rating. Mm, what am I saying? I'm getting lost in like the the murky details right now because like I'm so I'm still so like absolutely baffled that she would do this. It was seven days ago when it happened and like so much other shit happened that we need to get to but this like still just Lauren why to do this to go on Twitter and publicly blast these wonderful reviews and call them like children because they give wonderful reviews of your book. Like, Lauren, what were you thinking? Now, this thread continues. She says, all the writers scared to even like that tweet. I see you. We will hate them out loud for you. I know they're scary as shit. Fucking nerds on a power trip. You forgot to assign homework, motherfuckers. Okay, first of all, how are you going to call readers nerds when you're a reader and you wrote a whole book? Doesn't that make you the bigger nerd in this instance? Because, like, you like reading so much that you went out and wrote a book for people to read. Doesn't add up, Lauren. Doesn't add up. So, we're gonna fast forward a little bit. Um, Lauren came out with this whole thread calling these book reviewers out for their really high reviews, blamed it on being stoned. Book Twitter was pissed. They were like, absolutely just flat out show no mercy to her. 
Um, so they went and review bombed her book on Goodreads. Um, as it stands, her book on Tuesday, April 20th at 8.11 p.m., her book is currently a 1.82 on Goodreads. Um, it has 3,246 ratings, 1,178 reviews, most of them being I'm not going to say that I support review bombing um, because I'm not sure that I do. Here's my thoughts on review bombing this book. It's not a work of fiction. This is a memoir. This book is about Lauren Hoff. So review bombing a memoir of someone who was an asshole on Twitter Am I really, like, gonna call that unethical and wrong? I don't think so. Because it's a memoir about Lauren, and Lauren proved herself to be an asshole on Twitter. So review bombing her book, which is about her, why is that wrong? So if it's a memoir, <laughs> and it's about her life, shouldn't it be relevant to the book, everything they're putting in these reviews, I feel like it's relevant and I feel like it's valid. You had really high ratings and your book probably would have stayed at a really high rating because it, apparently it's a really good book. I'm not gonna read it because of everything that's happened, but it was supposedly like a really good book and people were like, hey, this book is really good. I'm gonna rate it highly. So you were at like a four something, four point blah, blah, blah rating. You complained about it and people were like, okay, well, if that's too low for you, why not make it lower? You know, I don't really see anything wrong with it. Like in general, review bombing is not like my favorite thing to do ever. Um, but if someone genuinely proves to be an asshole or proves to be problematic, go for it, you know? You didn't hear it from me, but in this instance, eye for an eye seems pretty fair. So, Lauren was, needless to say, not very happy. Um, so a few days ago, I think on Sunday, she went back on Twitter. She was like, hey, I am upset about these people review bombing my book, which like, I would be too, okay? Um, it's okay to say you're upset about it. It's okay to be like, hey, this really hurt me, even though you hurt people before and you're choosing not to apologize. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything bad about you simply going on and being like, this isn't fair. Because from her perspective, it's probably not fair even though she didn't apologize or anything. So what she did, instead of saying, hey, this is unfair, this is my book, it's completely unrelated to everything that happened, even though it's directly related, um, what she said was, I love how proud y'all are of this relationship that basically equates to shut up and take it. Don't make eye contact and we won't hurt you because we love books. Now raise your hand if that statement rubbed you the wrong way because it sure as hell rubbed me and many others the wrong way on Twitter. Because I don't know if you know this, but what she's saying is really reminiscent of what men say when they hurt women. So she's comparing the review bombing of her book to men harming women, like physically, mentally, what have you.
Do you understand why that's not okay? And if you think I'm jumping to conclusions here, I want to show you something else. There are several tweets of hers that are quote tweeting people who presented really valid concerns about her behavior, to which she replied with quotes that people have heard in response to them admitting to being raped or sexually abused or assaulted or any kind of like sexual violence in that wheelhouse it's so wrong it is so not okay and for her to play off of these kind of rhetorics for her book getting review bombed is just so hurtful to so many people and if you think i am still reading too much into her words here is i think one of the most damning tweets that lauren posted it says and i quote the trigger warnings in these tweets are extra special considering yes that is what's happening here but life doesn't give you warnings you'll know that later on and i want to clarify this was in response to a tweet that said trigger warning rape um sexual assault are you a privileged white woman really comparing rape to a book review so she said yes that is what she is doing comparing rape to a book review I shouldn't have to explain why that's wrong. I hope that I don't have to, because I'm not going to. Um, if you don't get why that's wrong, I'm not gonna provide you an explanation for basic human decency. Um, and I want to point out, trigger warnings are not, <laughs> like, trigger warnings are meant to warn victims who experience PTSD of content that can potentially harm them so making fun of trigger warnings is not ever okay it's not a joke they're serious they help people avoid content that can be very harmful to them um why would you ever joke about something like that as a victim like that's the part that gets to me is lauren hoff is a victim she says on her twitter that she is a victim as well so how can you sit there and mock people for their trigger warnings and compare a bad book review to literal rape how how do you live with yourself after that? It just, it... I just don't understand why she would do this. She's out here saying, oh, well, I'm this way because of my trauma and all of that. So, you know, if you knew me, you would understand why I'm like this. And it's like, if you're relying on a tragic backstory to justify your behavior, it's probably a good indicator that your behavior is not that great. Because like a lot of people have trauma and are not this way. Bullying people is not okay. I don't care if you have trauma that you want to blame your inappropriate behavior on. It's not okay because there are plenty of people who have very similar traumas who are not bullying people online. And another one of her defenses is like, 
oh well y'all are only bullying me because I'm a woman and because you're sexist and because of this and because of that and it's like no people are not bullying you first of all people are calling you out on your poor behavior because you were out there acting horribly to people how is that your defense is oh well you're sexist like i promise you i'm not sexist you're just being an asshole um so a grown early to mid 40s woman was online bullying children as young as 14. i think that's really telling I think that really tells you what kind of person Lauren Hoff is. And it just, like, I don't need to sit here and tell you that bullying children is not okay. Because if you're, like, any kind of a decent person, you understand bullying children is not okay. But to be in your early to mid-40s and bullying children online... Who are calling you out on your poor behavior. Are you proud of yourself, Lauren? Like, are you watching this and you're going, yeah, I'm justified. I'm justified in all of my behavior. Because bullying 14-year-olds on Twitter? I'm sorry, but that's almost never okay. It's a child. It's a literal child. Okay? You are nearly 30 years older than these children. And you are telling them to eat shit. And you are telling them that you're the victim here. And you are telling them that they're sexist. And that they're... Like, I just... It genuinely hurts my head to think that... To think that she went out there, typed all that out in her phone, hit send, saw the barrage of people saying, hey, not okay, man. And she doubled down. She went full steam ahead. She was like, actually, I'm in the right. Y'all are sexist. Lauren, what are you doing? And I know this is going to continue. Like, I know it's going to continue. It's... Lauren. Okay. So you're probably wondering, after all of that, what is Goodreads doing about her review bombing? Because they've taken neutral stances on review bombing before. They have absolutely let it slide for authors of color. Minority authors have had reviews that are unfounded based on not the content of their books, but, you know, like things that were confusing to white readers or things that, you know, they couldn't pronounce the names or they just thought there was too much diversity because that's a thing apparently. So you're probably wondering, okay, like, Goodreads lets these reviews slide. Um, what did they do about Lauren's book? They took reviews down. They took many reviews down. Uh, many reviews that criticized her behavior on Twitter. Um, they just took them down. <sighs> That's all I had to say about Lauren. I'm never going to read her book. I'm never going to read anything she's ever written. Um, I'm never going to watch her TED talk. I don't want this video to be like, make it seem like I'm condoning bullying her because um, I'm definitely not. So don't bully her because don't waste your time on it. Like, honestly, I'm like over it. Um, I just, honestly, I think we've exhausted everything that can be said about the situation. So unless she does something, like, super awful, horrible, like, um, I don't know.
amasses more Twitter crimes. Um, I probably won't be talking about her or thinking about her because she's not relevant to my life. Um, next week will be my Shadow and Bone review of the Netflix TV show, so definitely be watching out for that because I will try to be- I'll try to film that, um, Monday and post by, like, Tuesday or Wednesday. So definitely watch out for that one. I think it's gonna be really good. Um, yeah, I have a lot of opinions. I'm definitely gonna be talking about some of the casting controversies because I think that's really important to me and to a lot of people. Um, so I'll be talking about that next week. And then I think by the end of next week, it's like time for May. And you know what that means is a new monthly TBR. So, if you want to watch those things, if you want to watch other things, subscribe, like this video, comment and tell me what you think about everything that happened with Lauren, because I cannot talk about this enough. <laughs> I am so baffled and disgusted and confused by her behavior, so if you are looking for someone to talk to about it, definitely hit me up. I will absolutely talk ab to you about this. Um, follow me on Twitter where you can see me retweeting a lot of other people's stuff and tweeting every once in a while. <laughs> um, follow me on or add me on Goodreads um, where you can see my review of Lauren's book that says I will never be reading it. Um, I think that's everything. The cover of Lauren's book has like little sparklers on it. So if you made it this far in the video, put the little like blast emoji. I'll put it right here so you can see. Put that emoji in your comments so I know you watched this far. Um, we'll have like a secret code. And thank you so much for watching. It was a pleasure to have you here. Um, it was a pleasure to talk to you about this. And hopefully I'll see you next time. If I don't, I hope you have a really good week, a really good month, a really good life. And goodbye.